Hello and welcome back to MTG Burgeoning, your channel for all things magic. In today's video, we are going to add 20 more creature cards with mana values of 2 into our Momir Vig Cube. Thank you for choosing MTG Burgeoning for your Magic the Gathering content. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoy this video and consider becoming a subscriber. Doing so supports the channel and makes you eligible for our various subscriber reward series. If you would like to support the channel further, then click the link to our Patreon page in the description below. There you can join our ongoing Pack Wars series as a one month supporter or ongoing member. Or, try joining Pack Wars for free by commenting on every MTG burgeoning video in a month. We strive to offer creative rewards through our various Patreon tiers. So if Pack Wars isn't for you, then something else will be. Links to our content and various subscriber rewards series can be found in the description below. Send us an email, follow us on Twitter, follow us on Instagram. We are your channel for all things magic. What's up, MTGBC? That is the MTG Burgeoning community. Welcome back to another installment of our ongoing Momir Vig Cube series. If you are unfamiliar with the goals or purpose of this series, or just need a refresher, you can search in the description below for a link to MTG Burgeoning's introduction to the Momir Vig Cube. And while you're down there fishing around in the description, you can also click the link to Cube Cobra where you can view the entire contents of the cube as it stands right now. So for today, we've got 20 creature cards with mana values of two going into the cube, and we're going to pick up right where we left off with another mono white edition. This time it's the Sightless Brawler. It's a one. Uh, come on now, focus here. It is a 3 2. There we go. It's a 3 2 enchantment creature, but we are not going to be able to utilize its bestow ability because this creature is only going to be randomly summoned from the Momir Vig Cube. We can't pick it. It's not in our hand. We cannot cast it for its aura ability. So, for the purposes of Sightless Bla Brawler, it's a 3 2 that can't attack alone. It needs someone to guide it because it is sightless. All right, creature number two, and we're going to go monocolored here. We have Silver Mirror, a 1-1 one, one mirror that can turn sideways for one blue mana. A great way to ramp out a creature ahead of Momir Vig Curve, or a great way to fix the mana to activate the abilities of creatures that are on your side of the battlefield. Creature number three is a multicolored edition. It is Scarred Guild Mage, a 2 2 human shaman. Paying gruel colors will give creatures we control trample until end of turn. And paying one in gruel colors will give target land we control plus, uh, will give target land we control will become a 4 4 elemental creature until end of turn. That's still a land. Neither of those abilities will be activated without that gruel colored mana. So make sure you have basic mountains and basic forests in your basic land library. And as, as a side note, giving your entire board trample in a format like Momir Vig, where everything revolves around combat and winning and creatures, that could make Scar Guild Mage one of the most powerful and valuable two drops in the entire cube. Back-to-back -back multicolored editions, this time it is Sky Cat Sovereign as creature number four. It's a 1-1 one, one flying elemental cat that gets plus one plus one for each other creature you control with flying. The cube is filled with flyers. It is constructed to have as many evasive threats as possible. And if you are unfortunate enough to summon any of those to your side of the battlefield alongside Sky Cat Sovereign, while well, you're in luck for two in Azorius colors, you can create a 1-1 one, one cat bird creature token that has flying, but you need to have that, that plains and that island on your side of the battlefield, so make sure they are in your basic land library. Creature number five, as we reach the one quarter mark of this video and our first mono green edition, it is Skylasher, a 2 2 that has flash but doesn't matter, that can't be countered but doesn't really matter. It has reach and protection from blue. The reason why the flash doesn't matter is because you can only utilize your cynic visionary avatar as a sorcery. The flash is meaningless because it's never in your hand, it's just randomly summoned from the cube at max once per turn. 
turn. Creature number six, we're going back to multicolored, and this time it is Slaughter Priest of Mogus. It is a 2-2 Minotaur Shaman, and whenever we sacrifice a permanent, Slaughter Priest of Mogus gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn. We can pay two generic mana and sacrifice another creature. It says or enchantment, but there are no enchantments by themselves, of course, in the Momir Vig Cube format. It's all creatures all the time. So we can pay two, sacrifice another creature, and Slaughter Priest of Mogus gains first strike until end of turn. With its first ability coupled with the second, that really just means it's plus two, plus zero, and first strike until end of turn for the investment of two generic mana and the body of a creature. That could cause a great number of combat headaches for all of our opponents. Next creature up, number seven. It's our first mono red edition in this video. And we have Slith Firewalker. It's a 1 1 hasty Slith that whenever it deals combat damage to a player, we put a plus one plus one counter on it. There is a plus one plus one counter theme woven into this Momir Big Cube, and Slith Firewalker is a part of it. Next creature up, we're back to colorless. This time, it is Sliversmith, a 1-1 one, one spell shaper. We can pay one mana, tap it, discard a card to create a 1-1 one, one sliver artifact creature token named Metallic Sliver. Now, this will cause its controller to really think about where their resources are best allocated. Each time a creature is summoned from the Momir Vig Cube, its summoner must discard a card from their hand. Any cards in hands are lands, and the lands are necessary to be on your side of the battlefield to generate the mana to summon these creatures from the from the cube. So to allocate a card that could be used as a land on our side of the battlefield or to be discarded to summon a creature from the cube just for a 1-1 one, one sliver, well, it better be worth it. You better hope that you might have the luck of having other slivers on your side of the battlefield. And if that's the case, then you are going to be in good hands if you can get those slivers to all be on your side of the battlefield. All right, next up, creature number nine. We're back to Mono White, and this time it is Soltari Monk. It's a 2-1 with shadow, and it has protection from black. Now, a creature that has shadow can only be blocked by other creatures with shadow, and a creature with shadow can't block creatures that don't have shadow. So really what we're looking for here is... For the purposes of this format, there are other shadow components invested, but let's face it, this is most likely going to be a un un unblockable 2-1 that has protection from abilities of creatures that are black. And <laughs> it won't be able to block. All right, next up, as we reach the halfway point of this video, it's another multicolored edition. It is Spite Flame Witch. It's a 2-1 Elemental Shaman, and we can pay Rakdos mana to have each player lose one life. But that black and red mana is only going to come if you put those basic swamps and basic mountains into your basic land library. So don't forget to do that to MTG Base C. Next creature, it's number 11. It's another colorless edition. It is Steel Overseer. It's a construct. It's 1-1. One, one. It can turn sideways to put a plus one, plus one counter on each artifact creature you control. Yes, there are a number of artifact creatures that you could potentially summon from the cube. At its floor, this can tap and put a plus one, plus one counter on itself. With enough turns and without any potential interaction from any opponents, Steel Overseer could become quite menacing as the game unfolds. Another creature up, and it is another multicolored edition. It is the Storm Fist Crusader. It's a 2-2 Human Knight with Menace. At the beginning of our upkeep, each player draws a card and loses one life. The Menace is fantastic in the early game because that means it can only be blocked by at least two creatures. And putting an extra card in each of our opponent's hands is not optimal, but those opponents do lose one life, just like we do, and they don't have to worry about having to manage to block a 2-2 Menace in the early to mid-game. 
All right, next creature up, we have Mono Red. It is Storm Fleet Swashbuckler. It's a 2-2 human pirate with the Ascend mechanic. That means if we control 10 or more permanents, we will have the city's blessing for the rest of the game. If we're casting this on curve, it's going to take us a little bit of time to get the city's blessing. But when we do, Storm Fleet Swashbuckler will have double strike. So if we can keep it on our side of the battlefield long enough, we'll end up with a 2-2 double striker just for the investment of two mana next we have mono white and it's going to be strict proctor a one three flying spirit cleric whenever a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability to trigger that ability will be countered unless its controller pays two this could cause a great deal of headache for everyone on the battlefield, everyone at the table. Because if you each turn sink all of your mana into your Momir Vig Simic Visionary Avatar in order to summon a copy of the biggest creature you can as per mana cost mana value, you leave no mana open for the potential of having a very, very valuable ETB trigger trigger and it just gets countered because of the presence of strict proctor it's one three flying gives it some staying power for the purposes of swinging around to do little nits and picks of points of damage but is it going to be worth it to have this on the battlefield when we have so many creatures with very very valuable etb triggers well, this helps to drive one of the points of the cube home. Not every creature in it is going to be uber helpful or uber powerful. As we reach the three-quarter mark of this video, creature number 15, our first mono blue edition, it is Surge Mare. It's a 0-5 horse fish, and it can't be blocked by green creatures. Whenever Surge Mare deals damage to an opponent, we may draw a card, and if we do, we discard a card. We can pay one on a blue mana to give Surge Mare plus two, minus two until end of turn. So it has some limited protection against a green. It does have the ability to float its power and toughness around, but you can only do so if you are able to pay that blue mana, so make sure you have those islands in your basic land library. And if we're able to slip in for any kind of combat damage, well, we get to draw a card and disc discard a card, and that looting effect could be very valuable in helping to fix your mana. Creature number 16, we're back to colorless, and this time it is Suspicious Bookcase. It's a 0-4 defending wall that we can pay 3 mana and tap this creature, and target creature can't be blocked this turn. 0-4 is a pretty beefy blocker for the investment of 2 mana, and as our board begins to develop with more threatening creatures, paying 3 mana and tapping this well to make that creature unblockable, very, very sneaky valuable this bookcase is. All right, our next creature, and we have another multicolored edition. It is the Swift Blade Vindicator. It's a 1-1 double striking Vigilant Trampler. Jeez, they couldn't fit any more keywords onto this card, could there? If there are any ways through any kind of anthem effects of any of the creatures that you control that can make that power bigger, Swift Blade Vindicator could be a massive threat in a game of Momir Vig. Staying in multicolored, we're going to go with Sig River Guide. It's a 2-2 merfolk wizard with Island Walk, meaning that if any of our opponents control an island, Sig can walk right on it and deal two points of damage to right to them without the fear of being blocked, because Island Walk means that it's unblockable if defending player controls an island. We can also pay one and a white mana and target Merfolk we control gains protection from the color of our choice until end of turn, but once more, you can only activate that ability if you have the white mana to do so. And yes, there are a number of Merfolk in the cube, so at a bare minimum, you can use that ability to target Sig itself. Two creatures remain, and they're both mono green. The first is Sylvan Advocate, a 2 3 with Vigilance, and as long as we control six or more lands, it's going it and land creatures we control, which I don't think there's going to be many ways to get land creatures. It's not impossible. I know that it is possible in this variant, in this format, in this cube, but more often than not, the plus two plus two is just going to apply to Sylvan Advocate itself. So if we get to six lands, we got a four, five, Vigilant creature for the initial investment of just two mana. 
And lastly, creature number 20 is the Sylvan Caryatid. It's a 0-3 defender with hexproof that we can tap to add one mana of any color to our mana pool. This will help us to ramp out creatures ahead of the Momir Vig cube curve, and it will help to fix the mana for our activated abilities. And there you have it, MTGBC. 20 more creature cards with converted mana costs of two heading straight into our cube. Which are your favorites? Let me know in the comment section below. This is MTG Burgeoning, your channel for all things magic.